Hello everybody, my name is Jason. I'm a second year engineering science student at the University of Toronto. And today I'll be talking about the course EC159, Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. Today is December 22nd, 2021. It's probably quite fitting that I'm talking about ECE today, given that I just got my ECE 253 final marks back. But um, yeah, let's just get started. So what is EC159? Well, it's a compulsory year one winter course in the NSI program at U of T. When I took the course uh, during winter 2021, the two professors were Prof. Hoosh and Prof. Uh, Wang. As for the main course topics, this course definitely covered a lot. I felt like it had one of the largest breadths of any course I've taken in, um, uh, in my program so far. So obviously we go over uh, basic, um, you know, laws that you would need to analyze circuits such as Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws, voltage and current division. We go through methods of solving circuits like nodal and mesh analysis, linearity and superposition, Thevenin's and Norton's theorems, source transformation. We also cover op amps, in, uh, capacitors and inductors, and then we go into the topic of first order circuits. Uh, we also talk about phasers and impedance. So no longer talking about DC, but uh, AC. We talk about sinusoidal steady state analysis, apparent power and power factor. And finally, mutual inductance. Um, as for the practical component of the course, we also uh, learned how to use the simulation program, LT Spice, to build and simulate uh, circuits. So today I'll be going over a question from the midterm test number two that was administered March 30th, 2021. So almost six months ago. And this question uh, tested the following. So it tested circuit solving techniques. Obviously, um, pretty much every question that's given in this course, you're going to get a circuit with it. So you need to know how to solve it uh, using whatever laws like Ohm's law, uh, Kirchhoff's laws, not only mesh analysis, but this question in particular does deal with uh, a first order step response uh, for an RL circuit. So we need to have an understanding of inductors. And in this particular question, we also have a dependent source in our circuit. And so we need to understand um, how to find a Thevenin equivalent resistance when we have a dependent source. So this is the question. Uh, it's, it looks pretty short, but you'll see there are quite a few parts to it. And basically what it's asking is given this circuit, we have a switch S and it's been closed for a long time. At t equals zero, it's opened and then it's closed again after one second at t equals one. Now we want to find I have uh, I sub X, which is this current going through the two ohm resistor, and we want to find its value at T equals two seconds. So it seems like, um, you know, the question is quite simple, but actually there are many parts to it. Um, so we'll go over how we should approach the problem. First, we should analyze our circuit for T less than zero seconds to find um, the initial current uh, going through our inductor at zero seconds. Uh, the reason we should do this is because an important property of the inductor is um, the current flowing through it must uh, be a continuous function, which means there cannot be any abrupt changes, which means that when we perform the analysis of our circuit for different states, whether the switch is open or closed, the something that cannot change abruptly is the current going through the inductor. Then we should analyze our circuit uh, for the other two time intervals, which is t between zero and one second and t greater than one second. And we should find the equivalent RL circuit by finding uh, the Thevenin equivalent resistance <clears throat> as seen from the inductor. And we would use this uh, Thevenin resistance to find the time constant tau. And we want to do this because we want to write an expression for the current running through the inductor. So then we have to derive an expression for I sub L of T for T greater than one second using the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, the conductor, uh, sorry, the 
current going through the inductor must be continuous for all t. Then we need to find an expression for the voltage across the inductor for t greater than one second. And then we can use this voltage to find the current that's traveling through the two ohm resistor, also known uh, as I sub x at t equals two seconds. So that's quite a few steps. Let's just uh, get right into it. So since the current going through the inductor cannot change abruptly, we know that uh, immediately before the, uh, the switch is open uh, versus immediately after the switch is opened, the current should be the same as we take the limit. We know that the switch has been closed for a long time. This implies that we have DC steady state conditions, so the inductor would become a short circuit. We can redraw our circuit um, by simply replacing the inductor with a short circuit. And we should note that uh, Ix uh, is equal to zero because there's no potential difference across this resistor because it's been shorted. If we perform uh, KCL at the top node, we can find uh, an expression or we can find a value for I sub L and we'll find at DC steady state conditions, it's equal to 20 amps. So when we open the switch, um, the current going through the inductor should still be 20 amps uh, close to zero seconds. Furthermore, we should notice that when we open the switch, we can ignore this leftmost branch of the circuit because uh, no current will be traveling through there. So we can simplify our circuit to this. <clears throat> and we should notice that uh, it's just an RL circuit with no independent source. So as t approaches infinity, if we were to keep the switch open, of course, then gradually uh, there would be no more current running through the inductor since there are no independent sources. Now we want to find the uh, Thevenin resistance for this RL circuit. And in order to do so, we need to use a test source because of the fact that there's a dependent source here. If this wasn't here, uh, we could simply um, find the equivalent resistance, but we need to use a test source because there's a dependent source. So we use a, a test current of one amp and we can use mesh analysis by labeling the uh, mesh current uh, on the left as I1 and I2 for the right, uh, the right loop. If we use KVL around the right loop, we can solve for I2, uh, which will give us minus two over three amps. And then using I2 and our value for I1, which is just minus one amps, we can find uh, Ix, which is the current traveling through the two ohm resistor, and is equal to um, minus one over three amps. Using this information, uh, we can then calculate the voltage difference across our uh, test source, and that's equal to two over three volts. And then we can find the Thevenin resistance, which is the test volta the voltage across the test source divided by uh, the current provided by the test source, which is just two over three ohms. Uh, using the fact that our time constant is equal to uh, the inductance of the inductor divided by the Thevenin resistance, we then get that our time constant is uh, three, three over four seconds. Given that this is a source-free RL circuit, we can express um, we can express the current going through the inductor uh, using an exponential uh, decay, and it's just equal to the initial current uh, at t equals zero multiplied by e to the power of minus t over tau. And given that we found the initial current earlier using our DC steady state analysis, and we know the uh, time constant, we can write this expression. Then we can look at the end of our interval, which is uh, t equals one second, and we can uh, see what the current is at t equals one second. And we can carry this value as our initial condition into the next time interval, which is t is greater than one second. So for t greater than one second, the switch is closed again. So we again have uh, these three uh, separate branches of our circuit. And we should note that uh, as t approaches infinity, the current going through uh, I L will be 20 amps. Again, this is just like t less than zero seconds because we'll have a steady state current and so the inductor will become a short circuit. 
We should also turn off our independent voltage source. Uh, we should short circuit it in order uh, to find our feminine resistance for the RL circuit. Again, we need to use a test source because there is a dependent source. So we can get rid of our independent source and we can uh, replace our inductor with a test current of one amp. Uh, and we should notice that we can combine uh, our one ohm and two ohm uh, resistors uh, because they're in parallel. Their equivalent resistance is just two over three ohms. And simplifying, we can draw our circuit like this. Then once again, performing mesh analysis uh, using I1 and I2 to denote our mesh current, we can use uh, KVL around the right loop to find I2 is equal to minus four over seven amps. So our test voltage across our source is equal to two over seven volts. This gives us a feminine resistance of two over seven ohms, which means that tau, our time constant in this interval is seven over four seconds. We should note that this is a, uh, that for this particular interval, we have a first order step response in our RL circuit. The difference uh, in this case between the last case is because um, IL at infinity is no longer uh, zero. Between zero and one second, uh, IL infinity was uh, zero amps because there was no independent source. But in this case, uh, that's not true. It's actually equal to 20 amps because we do have an independent source. And so we can write um, our expression for I of L as a function of T uh, like so. And using our initial condition for T equals one second, we should note uh, that when t is equal to 1, um, our current value will be equal to 20 e to the minus 4 over 3. And furthermore, in the uh, exponent for um, this exponential term, we have a t minus 1. And the reason for this is because uh, our time interval technically starts at 1 second. And so when t is equal to 1, uh, the current should simply be equal to 20 e to the minus 4 over 3. So now uh, we can replace our, uh, we can re-add our inductor. And now we can find an expression for the voltage across the inductor. And the way we do this is by noting the fact that for an inductor, the voltage across it is equal to its inductance times uh, the time rate of change of its current. So given that we have I of T, we can simply take its derivative, multiply it by L, which in the question is given to be 0.5 uh, Henry's. And we can solve for the voltage at T is equal to two seconds, and it's around 2.3763 volts. We should note that the inductor is in parallel with this two ohm resistor, and so the voltage uh, difference across the inductor is the same as the voltage difference across the two ohm resistor. And so in order to find I of X, uh, I X uh, at T equals two seconds, we can take the potential difference and divide it by the resistance, uh, which is two ohms. And we'll find that our final answer for I sub X at T equals two seconds is 1.1882 amps. So just before I end the video, uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, a couple of people. First of all, uh, thank you to uh, Professor Hoosh and Wang for uh, the course and the midterm test content. I'd also like to thank my tutorial TA, uh, Beraz, for uh, helping me understand a lot of these concepts. Uh, I'd also like to thank the individuals uh, whose templates I stole from in order to make this presentation. Uh, so thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed that video.